Well, someone we've worked with on special projects here on the show, Dina Powell, I love her. the president of the Goldman Sachs Foundation and head of investing at the bank, is leaving her post to join the Trump administration. The president-elect intends to appoint Powell as assistant to the president and senior counselor for economic initiatives. In this role, she's going to build new efforts around entrepreneurship, small business growth, and the global economic empowerment of women. Now, Powell had oversaw some of Goldman's largest philanthropic initiatives, including the 10,000 Small Businesses Program and also their program, which helps female entrepreneurs around the so, world. So she loves you guys, but we've, we've known uh, her for really I've known her for 20 years. Uh, and the thing I always liked about her 20 years ago when she was working in Congress um, uh, and she worked for for somebody that I was trying to throw out of Congress, which is basically so everybody in leadership. Is what you're saying. No, no, we weren't. And that's the thing. She was always polite and respectful. She always had a lot of friends on the Democratic side. It's very interesting. Last night, I tweeted out, hey, Dina Powell, known her for 20 years, great addition to any team. Immediately, Nick Kristoff tweet, right. retweets that and says, I'm glad to have somebody like that around. She is great. She's been is working great. with who, Warren Buffett. Who, is, who do we know who has had a more impressive resume prior to the age of 40? than Dina Powell. And well, you know what's so fascinating is she comes from Egypt, uh, came and I guess her f they went down to, to Texas, couldn't speak the language. Wow. It's a, it's a really great uh, American success story. I think this is a good sign for women who are concerned about the Trump administration and whether uh, certain issues that are important to women might be overlooked in the coming years. Dina Powell is going to make sure that doesn't happen. We shall That's see. my gut, just from working with Join her. us now I'm at the sorry. table. Uh, somebody who's, oh, wow. who's been there from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I mean. News <laughs> correspondent Katie Tur We were just talking about Donald Trump. <laughs> we and, were. and it's explaining, you know, it's always a complicated relationship. How, how personally away from the camera, he's still charming. On yeah. camera, he's at war. Uh, let me get a book plug in here. I'm writing a yeah, book, so I'm yeah, going. Okay. So I'm going back and I'm looking at all of uh, the various things that 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 happened during the campaign trail, and I'm finding very the variety of interactions that we had uh, over the 17 months. And I, I keep finding over and over again, even at the tensest moments with, between me and the campaign, you know, reporting on leaks and reporting on, you know, holding him accountable to, for some of the things he said. Behind the scenes, when I would run into him, he was overwhelmingly friendly, sometimes to a point where it took me aback. Um, and there were cases... Are you talking about the, the kiss? Yeah. Yeah, but there was, well, you're talking was, about when he, he tried to pull you up with Yeah, well, so in, we were yeah. in Atlanta, and, I, and I, I can't remember what the, the exact report was, but this was outside of Atlanta. This is back in 2015. It's early on, and they, uh, they were upset at me about something. They weren't really, you know, answering my phone calls too much. And Donald Trump comes out, he talks to the media, because at that point he was talking to us all the time. He sees me in the crowd. Crowd, small crowd, and he tries to literally grab me and pull me up at, on on stage, essentially, with him, so he could introduce me to the waving crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, this is very uh, weird and yeah. uncomfortable, and yeah. I, I mean, like, as if I'm his wife or something, like, wave. Yeah. I, I, so there were just, there's a variety of... of, of it's going to be a good book. Well, I, it's going to be a good I, book. There's I, a lot also, of, a lot of interaction. I, I read that you were talking about how you were on the golf course, and it was in the middle of, you guys were having, again, a very tense relations between uh, the campaign and you, and so Suddenly, he's, he's, he has got a couple of friends on the golf course, and he's excited to introduce them to you. This is a great story because we're in Scotland. It's uh, you know the day of the Brexit vote, or the day after the Brexit, day before the Brexit, day before the Brexit. I don't know, one of the two. What? And um, he's on his Sc Scotland golf course, Turnberry, and I happen to stay on the golf course to do live shots. I'm the only reporter there, and lo and behold, Trump oh, no. comes by in his golf course court cart with the Secret Service and with a number of his executives, the Trump Organization executives, some of his golf executives, and he sees me and he waves me over and he's like, Katie, Katie's a great reporter. She's wonderful. <laughs> She's the best reporter. Everyone meet Katie. And then he caught himself. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. So you realize you are now going to get in trouble for normalizing. Oh, no, it's not. No, listen. I, I think that there's there. You have to be very clear. The, Donald Trump, the the person that is on stage, the person that is uh, running, um, going to be running the White House, needs to be held accountable for the things he says yeah. and the things he does and the inconsistencies and the and 
the variety of um, controversies and scandals that are out there. And he right. needs to answer questions on Russia more specifically than right. I've so, got nothing but, to do but, with that. So, Katie, but the, behind the, the important question is, though, that I think a lot of journalists would want to know that haven't had as close of an interaction with him as you have is what's Trump doing? Is that him playing the press? Or is that just Donald Trump? Who no, that's just Donald Trump. It's not him playing the press. Exactly, it is exactly. just Donald Trump. He will say that to anybody that criticizes him. He will try to win them over behind the scenes. And that is what frustrates him. When he can't win you over backstage, when he can't win you over with a phone call or a, an offer to go somewhere, one of his properties, that's what he doesn't understand. So when you continue to push back at him, which I continue to do there during the campaign, that's what got under his skin. And that's what we've been saying through the course of the past year, year and a half, the Donald Trump behind the scenes, and we've said this to our great frustration when we've been uh, really uh, upset about whether it's a Muslim ban or Judge Curiel or you just name it, Khan, whatever, the Donald Trump behind the scene is one person, but when he goes in front of the camera, it's almost like he puts his helmet on and he transforms almost into this reality show character who he says, okay, this is my public persona, and if somebody fights me, I'm going to war. I think it's very interesting that when you ask Donald Trump a question he might not know the immediate answer to, um, or might not have thought through uh, before, say on, on um, a myriad of issues, Planned Parenthood being one of them, his immediate reaction is a more moderate position. It isn't until later when somebody else gets into his ear or he's in front of a crowd, doesn't hear that yeah. roar, mm -hmm. that he changes and become, became more of a conservative. Well, that, that's the thing. You he look wants at, to get the reaction. The roar. Is that better or worse? There's arguments for both sides but I you know we I talk to people that are close to Trump and they say that he's not as conservative as he made himself out to be on the campaign trail <laughs> he's not. and they promised, he's not. And they promised over and over again that he Democrat. was going to change and he was going to come out well, as, as we've never, said all along Democrat, but he never yeah. did and that is a, that is the point and as much as Donald Trump's c companions and aides might say that he's against the Muslim ban that doesn't exist any longer Donald Trump himself has not come out and said that it's the roar and that is that's very his important it's the roar all right that's what he plays Shift. thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.